So first of all, I'm going to look at dive watches. So this is the first one. This is the Seiko Samurai. This is the paddy version. And as you can see, it's got the black guilloche dial. And if we can just catch that in the light so you can see that nice wave pattern. And it's got the sort of shape that looks like a Samurai. A little bit unusual. Um, quite, you know, it's quite big, but it's actually only, only just over 12 millimeters in uh, thickness. So, um, and it's got quite sh short look to lug length. So, it, it, you know, wears pretty reasonable. Um, I've got a seven and a quarter inch rest. I think you'd probably need a um, seven inch or over ideally for this one. Um, and you can see on the rest what it looks like. So that's, uh, that fits really nice. My next diver is the Nodus. This is the Nodus uh, Trieste. And you can see it's got the black peep, um, black finish on that one. And I tend to wear it on quite often on this one. This is the Vintage Bond NATO with the matching black hardware. Uh, I've also got a couple of rubber NATOs that I do, do wear that with. And it's actually the, 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 the bezel is also sapphire crystal. That's a little bit unusual, but if that's a really good hard material, so it works really well. And again, if I can just put this one on my wrist just to see what that one looks like. I just put it through pretty pretty loose for now. And there we go, that's the I've just put the, the native. Let me just tuck that in. Is it a little bit like him sort of flapping around like a lot of people do wear them? So there we go, and that's the that's the uh, Nodus Trieste, and I highly recommend Nodus. Make some really great watches. The next, my next diver is my latest um, watch. This, this came out um, late October. I picked it up in early November, days after it come out. This is the uh, Boulder Odyssey Free Diver. This is the White Frost version, limited to one hundred. So it's got that nice sort of. Um, Pat uh, rough textured off white dial, and a lot of the free free divers, a lot of the Odysseys have actually got numbers in, instead of indices and, and little circles. So, I did like this one, and I like the fact it was limited, and I like the idea that this had just come out. So, I thought it was quite nice getting a you know, getting something that had just come out. And I do you like it's got the little polished details on it's actually comes on a uh, quick release rubber which is really really good and i've been mainly wearing it on that one but at the same time i got this i did buy this the, the steel bracelet for it which you, which again is quick release so it's easy to swap from one to the other and it's got uh, screwed links so it was very easy to adjust and it's got six adjustments so this and this this does fit absolutely perfect on my wrist and i think you know the six six adjustments is a really good thing so if i just quickly put that one on and show you what that one looks like. And there we go, a little bit of a wrist roll there. And anyway, field watches. So the Alpinist, the Seiko Saab 017, commonly known as the Alpinist because it's got the compass. Uh, it's a field watch. Uh, it's got the um, sunburst green dial which really catches the light it's great when you're actually out in you know in the field with all the green and everything and it just blends in so well and it's got the, the you know the cathedral land and the gold indices and that amazing uh finished uh curvy polished case and i i tend to wear it on this sort of fabric strap which is christopher ward strap i've, I've also recently seen this on um some green rubber straps that that it looks really good on uh, brown um, some some brown levers and things you can wear them on NATO's uh, and things like that it looks really good on and it's it's really good it's gained two hundred meters water resistant um, and I've worn this a lot in the field and around water and all sorts of things it's um, it's a very tough watch but you know the idea is it also looks good if you go on a trip for, for the evening because it's you know the case and the hands and just just the superb finishing on that one. And that's 38 millimeters. It's got a little bit longer lugs. So my my next um, three field watches are all bolder and they're all ventures. This is the first one. This is the carbon black. 
and this is, you know, I think this is one of the more popular ones. This the black dial. It's it's very legible, easy to read. And it's also got the twenty four hour markings on that one, and it's titanium. It's really lightweight, and again, it is thirty eight millimeters. Um, comes on a NATO, but it's well worth getting this. Um, the bracelet. It's a good price. It's around about hundred pound. I think all the all the boulder bracelets around a hundred pound, and they're all good. They're really good for for a titanium bracelet. It's absolutely great. It, and, and it just fits really well, which again is the thing with the bolder watches, all the bracelets do fit absolutely really good bracelets. And you can just um, click that in place. And that, that's so light and it's so comfortable to wear, easy to read. And you can just, you know, as well as in the field, you can just wear it anywhere really. The next um, bolder venture is the white one which is the, um, oh yes, yeah, sand, sorry, Sandstorm, I can't remember what it was called then. Uh, so this is the Sandstorm version. So I'm just winding that one. I can just show you that, the winder. I'm just gonna wind that one on a little bit because um, we've got the hands one on top of the other one, uh, which all seems to happen when I make these videos. So I'm just gonna wind that in. And you can see, so the, the, the hands are, a sort of um, off-white colour, and it came on a matching NATO, which looked look, look really good. But again, I've, I've put this on the titanium bracelet. I, I do like to wear these on the titanium. And you can see it's a little bit unique. It's that sort of typical boulder sort of shape and um, style, but it's pretty much the white version of the, of the last one. And again, on the bracelet, it it looks like that, and it's you know just a bit of an alternative from the black one. So this is a limited edition now. My next one, and this is I think limited to 160. And this is the uh, Bold Adventure Chigo, and you can see it's got the diff very different colouring. It's got the sort of blue, and then the sort of uh, ready orange in the middle. And this time, it, it, you know, it's just got the the more basic logo, and it says Chigo on that. And and then that, and that is the NATO. Now this one does come in a box set, and it, you know, a, a, as well as additional stickers and all sorts of things. This is a collaboration with Kenji Chai, the the graffiti artist, and there's there's an actual figure, and I don't think you can pick that up, but there's a there we go. That's the sort of Kenji Chai logo, the the dog, um, the Chai go. And you also get um, the model of the Chai Go in the set. And like I said, the, the titanium bracelet, but I do, I really like this strap. And it, it's got the matching um, titanium hardware on. But this strap was design, um, partly designed by Kenji Chai himself. And it's funny, whenever I put this watch on social media, everyone, you know, always get comments on people liking the strap. You know, oh, that, that looks really good on that strap and everything. And it, it does match the... The, the indices and the numbers, that sort of colour. So I think that one looks really good. Um, so this is a little bit different. And yeah, I really like this one. Let's just put that NATO through it. So it doesn't, no, it's not going to look right. And there you go. Look, you can see. And 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 the, the logo on that, it depends on the light if you can see it or not. So there you go. You can't see it now, I don't think. And now you can see it. Next, I've actually got a, uh, a pilot watch. And this is the um, Lewin Huey, which is the company's now Nth, which is nod to history. And this is pilot watch I've got on this nice um, army um, sort of NATO. And... I think this is like a, like a sort of desert storm style NATO. And yeah, really nice that one is. And it's it's sort of got connections to the Phantom aeroplane. And again, the uh, the loom's excellent on this. Everything, you know, the, you know the, the, the bezel and everything sort of glows really well. I like the way that it's got that sort of off coloured, um, but all matching numbers on the bezel, the hands, the indices. And it's, and it's sort of sandwich dial, so it's like layered. And you know it's like a bit like a sort of patina on it, and it's got a big domed. You can see there, look the big dome crystal, which I really like. And that's acrylic, 
and, you, and it's easy to clean and again it's just catches the light it's got so much warmth um, i'm definitely gonna look out for more watches with a crystal uh, crystal lights and on these sort of watches non-diver and non-field style watches given the choice between a sapphire and acrylic um i would usually you know pick the um the acrylic it's a bit different it's um it's just so nice and and it does clean you know clean clean sort of dust off and everything with, with any sort of cloth it's it, you know you don't need the special sort of watch cleaning cloth and um you know it's also got a lot of advantages as well so I've I've really enjoyed this watch and it's just a little bit different I did pick it up really cheap second hand um don't think these have been available for some time uh but I think you know I'd highly recommend this one it's a little bit different there we go and and you can see it's it's a really good size as well that it fits really well Again, another watch I picked up really cheap second hand was this um, Perpetual Chronograph. So this is my only chronograph. All my other watches are, are sort of freehand automatics. All my watches are automatics. This is a, not only a chronograph, but it's the only one that's not automatic. It's actually a uh, um, hand wine watch. And that just probably you know keeps it a bit thinner. It's got the seagull movement, and you can see that. It's a, such a great movement, and it's got a lot of history to the... Sort of Chinese military um, and, and machines, being the old Venus machines, uh, buying them from America and that sort of thing. So that's, it's the sort of thing when you get the watch with that movement, you can research and um, you can see that it's got the nice, nice sweep there, and it all works quite nice. It's, it's got a thirty minute, and you can um, stop that one, and you know it flies straight back and everything. It's got a really good case. I do like it on this strap, and you just un unscrew this to to alter the straps. It, it actually came on um, a black alligator strap, which looks really nice. But I do, I do in particular like to wear it on this one. So let's have a look at this one. Um, and sort of wear this one for relatively smart, not like a best watch, but when I sort of dress a little bit smarter, or casual smart, and. I think they do this with a black dial as well, which, um, you know, I think is, is probably worth looking at. So there we go. That's the perpetual chronograph. And my 10th and final watch I currently have is my only you know, proper dress watch. And this is the Seiko Brassage. It's the cocktail time. This is the um, skydive in. And you could see the, you know, that pattern which sort of goes from the center I suppose this can be described as sort of galoshy from the center and it it's also some basically it catches the light and it can turn and uh, go from silver to to blue and the the strap it comes on is black with blue stitching and it's very shiny and a lot of people don't like it i i wear it on that most of the time it's just recently i've put this uh camel um you know, vintage oak Christopher Ward strap on it, and, and literally in the last few days, and just for a bit of a change, and, a, and I think it looks really good on this one as well. So it's definitely versatile. Um, can be worn on brown or black. Which for me, if you like me, if you're gonna have just one dress watch, I think that's good. So you could wear it with your, you know, when your browns or your blacks. I think that that gives it a lot of um, really versatile, and it's got that nice blue second hand. And to, for me, for what you want to dress watch, it's it's not sapphire crystal. It's it's the sort of Seiko lens, but you know it's, it's a dress watch. It's, I'm, I'm not you know I'm not going to be taking it out um, you know in, in the in the mountains or fields uh, or kayaking or swimming or anything like that or surfing. It's you know I think you don't really need a sapphire crystal for a for a dress watch. Mm -hmm.